Once you're sure that you want to pursue a general counsel role, you're going to want to make sure that you're cultivating the right kind of experience and marketing yourself for the GC position, both internally and externally. And stay tuned until the end because I'm going to share with you my favorite resource for lawyers to help them to make the case that they are GC material. Welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, I'm Annie Little. I'm an ICF certified career coach and former lawyer. I created this channel for lawyers who are looking for practical guidance on how to land, lead, and succeed in the legal profession and beyond. Let's start by talking about how you can cultivate GC experience. Now, in a prior video, I talk about the necessary skill set that you would need to succeed as a general counsel. Now, how do you get that kind of skill set? How do you get that experience? Here's how. As an in house counsel, you are going to seek out complicated sort of issues that involve cross functional teams that are kind of messy. And you're going to volunteer to be the legal point person on that team, or better yet, to head up that team. And this is going to be a kind of project that's going to get the attention of senior management. So an example of this kind of messy cross-functional problem that all companies kind of have might be like uh, modifying or streamlining the records retention policy. Now, this is a team that would involve virtually every department within the organization. So you've got the cross-functional aspect taken care of there. But in this type, we want to make sure that you're going to be, you know, getting in front of senior management and that they're going to be taking note of what you're doing. That's a big part of it. And with a records retention policy, you're going to need to get the buy-in of two departments, one IT and senior management, because they're the ones who are going to have to authorize all of this. And so this is the kind of project that's not only going to give you that exposure to senior management while you're still a junior in-house counsel, but it's also going to give you a lot of opportunities to get hands-on experience dealing with lots of department, you know, representatives from different departments, talking to people, learning how to collaborate, teamwork, manage as well. There's going to be deadlines. You're probably going to have to put together reports or presentations to uh, keep senior management apprised of how things are going. And so if this, if you're in an organization where you think you might be able to get promoted up into the GC role, these types of projects are absolutely necessary. And if it's more of an opportunity for you to move outside to get a GC role. This is how you're going to cultivate that experience. So cultivating the right experience is absolutely necessary if you want to hold the GC title at some point, but it's not enough. You need to make your aspirations to become general counsel known. And there are two ways to go about doing this. There's the internal route and the external route. So internally, People aren't going to just be like anointing you <laughs> the next GC. You're going to have to let people know. So your supervisor is a good person to make aware of your aspirations. And this is important for a lot of reasons. One, it's like, hey, I want to be the one to go up to GC, but it's also letting them know that you are interested in getting the type of experience that's necessary to become a GC. Now, your supervisor can help you with this next one because what you're going to want to do is be realistic about your chances of rising to the GC role inside your current organization. There's only one position and depending on when it was last filled and how long the person who is currently in the role is going to stay in that role, there might not be an opportunity for you realistically to get into the general counsel position internally. But regardless of whether you're going to stay internal or go to another organization, you are going to need references. So you are going to be taking on these projects like the records retention example I provided earlier so that people will get to see you in action and they can be references for you should you go somewhere else. And internally, if you have an, have, uh, an opportunity 
to get that GC role, you're gonna wanna be showing everyone, especially senior management, what you're capable of. It's also important for you to start to develop or further develop and project executive presence. This is basically you exuding confidence, but not arrogance. And because and you want to be seen as a trusted advisor. So you can have personality, you can be friendly, you can be funny, but just keep in mind what kind of aura, if you will, do you want to project so that people feel like they can trust you to help them with their problems. All right, then there's the external route. Now, even if you think you might have a chance of being promoted internally to general counsel, it's still a good idea to make your intentions known externally. So a very low stakes way of doing this is when you get called by a recruiter for opportunities, take their calls. <laughs> even if you're happy, even if you have no desire to leave at this point, talk to them, see what positions they're filling. Let them know that you're interested in GC roles. Start to develop relationships and you never know when you might need to use a recruiter or to have somebody in your court or you never know where they might end up and they know a lot of people that could be helpful to you as you're trying to, to uh, move up in your career. So that's the lowest stake way. But if people aren't calling you, then it's important for you to seek out these executive search firms, um, in-house GC specific recruiters, and you can find people like this on LinkedIn. They put that kind of information in their headline and you just wanna reach out and let them know that you are in the market for that. And you can start to develop a relationship with them that way. So you've got somebody who at least knows, okay, this person's interested and you're on their radar. Speaking of LinkedIn, you are gonna to wanna to update your LinkedIn profile so that it's attractive to recruiters who may be running searches for employers who are looking to fill the general counsel role. So you want your profile to read like somebody who is a general counsel, somebody who wants a general counsel role. And if you don't have people pursuing you, you don't have recruiters reaching out to you, you can always look yourself on websites, especially goinhouse.com and acc.com. Now, as you've probably gathered, this is not going to be an overnight process, which is why it's important that you start now. Start cultivating that experience that GCs need or continue to develop. If you already have that experience, build upon that experience, take on even more challenging projects, lead up more of those projects. Make sure pe people who are in the C-suite know who you are and know what you're capable of. That is going to help you, whether you're going to move up internally or externally. And if you feel like you're still at the very early stages of generating the kind of experience you need, I think you might be surprised by just how much relevant experience you may already have. And to help you out, to identify that, I want you to check out my free masterclass, Three Simple Strategies for Helping Any Lawyer Uncover Their Transferable Skills. It's linked in the description below. And like so many of the lawyers who have watched this masterclass before you, you are going to be pleasantly surprised when you realize just how much of your existing experience is transferable to a GC role.